In another video, we showed you how to take out these blind rivets or tubular rivets. They're called blind rivets because you can install the rivet from one side and you don't need access to the back. So we showed you how you can cut that, push the pin out and cut the tube off by cutting the head off with a chisel. You shear the head off and push the shaft or tube out the back. With these buck rivets though, or solid rivets, you can't do that. It's just, they're really too hard to cut through easily with a chisel. The way these are installed, you need access to both sides of the panel. So they're called buck rivets because you use a bucking bar like you would use in auto body work. And the rivet goes through the hole and the back goes up against the bucking bar. And then you have an air chisel an air hammer like this with a bit that has a dimple head that goes over the head of the rivet and you hammer that flat. So the back side gets hammered flat and it clamps the, the pieces of material together. So the easiest way we found to remove those is to cut the back, grind the back off and then pop this out from the inside. I'll show you that in a second. These are the holes in the driver's side of the bus where the rub rail was riveted with blind rivets onto the bus skin or onto the bus framing like over here. So what we do is grind the flat part of the interior, uh, the hammered or mashed or bucked part of the rivet off and then punch the rivet head out. And it leaves a pretty clean hole that we can then use for riveting the rubber rail back into place. For doing this, I've got heavy gloves. These are actually insulated, so they're thicker than just regular leather gloves in case this wheel were to come apart or hit me. I've got my face shield. I know it's not permissible or safe, I guess, to do this, but I do remove the guard from this grinder because I need it off really it it hinders my access to a lot of these rivets in here you can use four inch or five inch grinding wheels but i find that when they get smaller like this and i do save the smaller ones when they wear down and they get to about that big i save those because it's handy for getting into some of these tighter spaces where you can't get in with a big full-size grinding wheel instead of coming in flat like that i think it's better to use the edge of the wheel. First off, that's the way it was designed to be used, so you don't keep making the grinding disc thinner and thinner. But second, that way you can kind of move back and forth, and because of the radius of the disc, you're taking off the head here, this flat part, the bucked part of the rivet, without gouging into the metal too much, and you can really control it very nicely. So let me show you what I do. Normally I would grind all those off at once and pop them out in a second go around. But I'll show you just as an example. Really the hardest part is once you grind it, finding the head of the rivet there. And I can just barely see the contour, the line there. And I'm using a pointed little chisel bit and an air hammer. I put it against that. And now I've Pop that rivet out and it leaves a nice clean hole. Let me talk a little bit about the angle grinder and how I use it. You'll see that arrow up here. The blade rotates this way. So I tend to cut in this direction and the blade is rotating down. So it wants to climb up. I like, like I said, I have the guard off and that is probably not suitable for a lot of situations, but I like to grab the head of the angle grinder here close to the blade. It gives me good control, but if it were to catch and jump, 
my fingers are clear of this. You don't ever want your hand above the blade because I've had this happen. If it catches and jumps up, it'll cut through your glove. So with my other hand, which is holding the camera, I'm holding this down here and I hold it in pretty close to my body. So I tend to sit down and I snug this right up into my belly and I hold the other end here and then I kind of rock it back and forth. If I'm cutting on one like this, I use a little bit of wrist action on this end just to rotate it up and down and cut the head of that off. And then vertically like this, I just kind of move it side to side a little bit. But again, keeping in mind that I want to stay clear of the path of the blade if it were to catch and jump up. For rivets that are inside a channel like this, if this is sacrificial, I'll just cut right through it. So I'll come in like that, cut that rivet off in there, but cut a slot right through the channel to get to it. Again, that's because this is sacrificial, or if it is, and I don't need it. Uh, but in this case, I won't need to take that rivet out. You'll see that these actually pop free without me having to hammer them all the way through. Once I get the rub rail off on the outside, I'll finish grinding those a little bit and pop them out of the rub rail so I've got clean holes through which I can rivet the rub rail back on. As far as punching the body and head of the rivet out goes, I use an air chisel with a pointed tip. Now this is loose in here, so when you do it, you want to put the point up against the rivet and kind of push on it so that you, you're not bouncing around. If you have it out here, that chisel and it's hard to uh, try to do that and get where you want to be. You'll notice that over here, sometimes you'll bounce off the, the rivet and that's okay. I dented the metal over here a little bit. I dented that over here a little bit. Not a big deal. Remember, like up here, this is going to be behind the lower part of the rub rail, and I will just tap that back flat, and this portion down here is all getting cut out. So put the chisel tip right up on the rivet, apply some pressure, and push it out.
Anyway, you see how quickly that goes. So I've got eight panels to do on this side of the bus, and if each one takes me five minutes, I can knock out the side pretty quickly. So I'll take out the bottom ones, and then, uh, I'm sorry, both rows on the bottom rug rail, and just the bottom rivets on the upper rug rail, and we'll get this side done. The technique I showed you works fine when you have access to the inside, but what if you don't? Like these are inside this column, and I can't easily get in there. Even if I, after I take the interior skin off, it's hard to get in with a grinding wheel. And this piece of metal is going to be replaced. So this is sacrificial. In that case, I will just take the grinder and grind the heads off. I'm not worried about marring this. But what if you're worried about protecting this? Say I had to take these rivets out, but I couldn't get to the inside. Then what I find is best is to uh, use a punch, a center punch, and punch a good starter mark in the center of the head and then drill into that with a quarter inch drill bit. And if you do that, eventually then the head will start spinning on the bit and then you can push the shaft in the body of the rivet and not mar up the skin. But in this case, I'm just gonna come over these with the grinder and cut them off and peel the skin away. I should point out that when I'm working around a window like this, I don't use the air chisel. So after I ground these off, focus. After I ground these off, I punch them out just gently. A little tap, 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 and do it by hand. Only took a little bit of grinding, and these popped out pretty well. And the Rivetopia, the <laughs> never ending line of rivets is done. That actually only took about an hour once we got access to the inside. So there you go. That's how you take out the solid buck rivets.